According to director Ridley Scott, he calls his 1982 film Blade Runner his most complete and personal film he's ever made in his career. Initially, he didn't want to tackle the project due to recently completing a science fiction horror film known as Alien being released in 1979. His intentions were not wanting to instantaneously jump onto another film revolving around the same genre. After being convinced by writer Hampton Fancher, he eventually agreed and now Blade Runner is considered a cult classic and one of the most heavily influenced science fiction films in modern cinema from a cultural and aesthetic standpoint. It brought to life the engaging world of a dystopian neo-technoir future that helped spawn wonderful work such as Mamaru Oshii's Ghost in the Shell or even the 1999 film The Matrix directed by the Wachowskis and many other works that, without Blade Runner, we wouldn't have this cyberpunk movement as some would call it. Although the film received mixed reviews from both the audiences and the critics in 1982, how did it receive that cult classic status from years to come? Was it Rutger Hauer showing off his body off in briefs? No. Or maybe Daryl Hannah showing off some of her crazy dance moves. Well, maybe. Or maybe it's Harrison Ford's creepiest kiss of all time. No, nah, that's not it either. But it's actually the much more deeper and complex approach to how society perceives a what is actually human or not. Although many videos are made about the entire theme and how people perceive the film, how they want to perceive it, I want to explore a concept that is more relevant to the times of today in 2017 since we're actually very close to heading into 2019. Now Blade Runner is more of a cinematic study based off the migration of immigrants. The atmosphere and world building within Blade Runner illustrates so much about the cold and grimy society the replicants will soon be re-entering. Opening with a quote in the beginning in which they are banned from Earth, considered illegals, and killed on sight by a Blade Runner, this hints at the concept that people are not too willing to accept who the replicants really are. As evidence can be found when shown by the character of Bryant when he refers to the replicant models of Nexus 6 as skin jobs, the four skin jobs Chris. establishes how this dystopian Los Angeles views them in a racist sense. Although not explored on why Bryant views them in this way, I believe the film executes that miraculously based on not telling us who Bryant is internally. Individuals can perceive anything they like and how that emotion sparks from their mind can come from an unknown place. It's just simply who they are. Bryant symbolizing the overall view of society and Deckard being the outsider looking in, which could even be why he retires as a Blade Runner at first. I squid when I come in here, Brian. I'm twice as quit now. Even the next time we see Bright in the film, which after Deckard just finishes retiring Zora, he wants Deckard to celebrate for himself and even go as far in ordering Deckard to kill Rachel. Not really knowing a single thing about her, he wants Rachel dead simply for the fact that she is a replicant. Which in fact traces back to that opening quote how the replicants were banished from Earth because of a bloody mutiny after resisting slave labor. One horrible incident happens which causes the Blade Runner business to go booming and ultimately creating an overall one-dimensional image on how society perceives them. The Blade Runners, dystopian Los Angeles, and even Brian all represent that fearful society of citizens. Replicants, on the other hand, represent the immigrants and their goal in blending in with the rest of society. Now we get to Roy Batty and his crew of replicants, whose main goal is to extend their lifespan on Earth since they're Nexus 6 models. They are given a four-year lifespan until they die of what you can say, old age. Roy and his friends search for that longing of life, just like an immigrant would when moving to a different country is to better their lives and be free. Although a perfectly executed symbolic scene is when Deckard does retire Zora, where he shoots her twice in the back, one in each shoulder blade, almost identical to an angel getting their wings stripped from them. An angel symbolizing the superiority of human beings in both power and intelligence, as all replicants are or identical to the creator, Deckard is stripping her away of her wings, also resembling her freedom. Even though the rest of the replicants don't die the same exact way as Zora did, but that's how the replicants feel internally as they are being hunted down by the Blade Runners. Because in the replicants' point of view, it's these Blade Runners, or society, that interrupt their goals of inventing a new life for themselves 
themselves due to their fear of the potential damage they can bring to society. So now we reach to the part where the replicants including Leon and Pris are now dead and all that's left is Roy Batty. Due to discovering that he will never have an extended life from Tyrell, his creator, he has a mental breakdown and kills him with a pretty sweet wrestling move. Roy uses the last bit of life he has left and decides to spend it fighting Deckard. To put him in his place and understand how he truly feels, Roy takes the very thing that gives Deckard his power and breaks two of his shooting fingers. Through a long and hard fought battle, they both end up on the roof where eventually Deckard attempts to jump from one building to another and fails miserably. With ease, Roy Batty jumps over and looks down upon the struggling Deckard ready to fall to his death. Instead of letting him fall to his death, Roy Batty attempts to save him, and ready to die, Batty gives possibly one of the most heartfelt soliloquies ever put to film. All those moments will be lost in time, like tears in rain. And upon that, Roy is finally set free. The Tears and Rain soliloquy made Deckard understand that he was in a way like Roy Batty, a man long yearning for a new life as he wasn't necessarily a malicious villain, but an individual who just wanted to live and escape the oppression he once faced. Although Deckard deals with his internal struggles by drinking and lonely nights of reflection, he still feels sympathy towards the replicants as evidence shows he wasn't too proud of taking the life of Zora. But upon hearing Roy Batty was someone who simply wanted to live and and even saving Deckard from his demise, this shows some form of existence that Roy dreamed of having. This made it seem like Roy was the protagonist and Deckard the antagonist, the entire plotline of the film. That is, of course, until Roy explains to him. Now, in a sense, Blade Runner is a tragedy looking at the viewpoints of immigrants as shown through Roy Batty and his group of replicants. All of them end up getting killed, but in a way, succeed to change the heart and mind of one man. Like I said before, that is a form of human existence that these replicants dreamed of. A change from an already negative utopia by bringing freedom to somebody else.